I'm Chase Core. I'm Chris Core. This is the Andrews Mustang Slot Team Mafia Show, Episode Nine. We're here in the studio. That's brought to you by Daniel Montoya with Monument Realty. Uh, our backdrop here is brought to you by Nix and Nax, local business here in Andrews. Uh, we are not affiliated with Andrews Independent School District or Andrews High School. Um, in this uh, episode, we're going to go ahead. We got some special people. Some Andrews Mustangs going to be live in the studio that we'll get to here in a little bit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a recap of this last game, uh, game number five versus Lubbock High. And Chris, we're going to go ahead and tell me your thoughts on the Lubbock High game. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a really good get right game. We kind of talked talked about that before our live stream Friday afternoon. Of course, we had the 4 o'clock kickoff. It was about 100 degrees on the field. So it was a little bit of a, a routine breaker. Um, but uh, I think we ended up rushing for 530 yards. Uh, Got to be in the top five, Andrew's his, history rushing maybe top three um the offensive line played excellent it was really a clinic in the way the slot t is supposed to be run especially there in the second half when kind of warmed down defense did what they've been doing all year the defense played excellent uh, you got to tip your hat to the coaches and the kids for getting it ready and we've got a big one friday night and um we're going to go ahead and go into the uh, recap the lubbock High, the stats so total plays andrews ran 61 total plays uh lubbock High ran 65 total plays Passing yards, Andrews had none, and Lubbock High had 180. Rushing yards, Andrews finished the game with 523, and Lubbock High finished the game with 177. Uh, first downs, Andrews had 24, Lubbock High had 17. Turnovers, Andrews only had the one turnover. That was big. Very big, and Lubbock High had three turnovers. Uh, penalties, Andrews had – we actually cut down in this game a lot better. We had six penalties for 21 yards. Huge. And uh, Lubbock High had nine penalties for 50. Um, on the offensive end, uh, Jay Sean DeBose had 20 carries for 241, two touchdowns. Uh, Merck Saiz had 12 carries for 119 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Jay Mullins, he had uh, seven carries, 78 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Mian, Leroy Mian had 11 carries for 52 yards, two touchdowns. You, you see where I'm going with this. Olivas had five carries for 32 yards and a touchdown. Big night and running the ball. Back up, fullback, Mr. Chavez had two carries for a yard, and one was a one-yard touchdown uh, run. On the defensive side of the ball, we had Adolfo Valles had uh, interception. Um, Cooper Iverson had a fumble recovery. And Brady Kelly uh, had a nice uh, interception uh, there in the, uh, I believe, first, first or second quarter. quarter. Yeah. And uh, – Shout outs uh, for the game. We always do a shout out section. Uh, number one was the Andrews Mustangs offensive line, uh, straight up domination. Uh, we wore them down late in the third and fourth quarters. Lubbock, I didn't want anything in the second half. They were on skates. They didn't want no more. We could have gotten um, there and run by. Them. Matter of fact, if we would have had another five or ten minutes or another quarter, there ain't no telling. They were just they were done with us. Yes, yeah. And uh, they didn't want any more. Um, also on the defensive side, shout outs, Damian Ordonez, um, had a good, nice game. He had some great coverage plays, great fill in on some outside runs. Juan Hernandez, um, he was a beast in the backfield. Adolfo Valles was also had a really good game. Uh, Colton Stewart, um, had a really good game. He's one of the youngsters that fills in on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, so we wanted to give those guys a little bit of shout out and, uh, um, and Chris hinted on it. We did some research. I called some people. We did some digging in some newspapers, clippings, things that we had. And um, what we come up with, not official, but we believe that this game, Andrews, that was the second most rushing yards that they had in a game in Andrews Mustang history. So any of you guys out there, if you have any clips, you got any receipts, you want to comment in our comment section, if you have some some information that we that maybe we uh, you could share with us, we'd appreciate that. Just put it down in the comments. Um, in this next section, we're going to go ahead and move on into this week. It's a big game. We're three and big two. Game. We got uh, Canyon Eagles coming to town, and Canyon sitting at four and one um, on offense this year. They had three returners on offense. They had four returners on defense from a ten and two team last year. Uh, in 2022, I know last year we went down there. We got behind real early. We fought all the way back in the game and just come up short at the end of the game. Uh, players to watch, watch their film. Uh, I, I only got one player to watch on their team that really 
I think that's going to – he's a booger bear, and I think we're going to have some issues with. He's a linebacker and a running back. His name is Sam Johnson. They have him listed at six foot 215. I'd say he is uh, six foot, probably 225, 230. Yeah, I think he gave us some trouble last year. You know, Canyon, the thing about Canyon, uh, they're always well coached. Their kids play hard. Um, we've had some really good battles with them the last six or seven years. Um, you know, uh, watching them and kind of comparing scores and, and watching them once or twice earlier in the year, you know, I want to say they're similar to Randall. Um, they're not real explosive offensively, but they're well coached and they have a whole lot of offensive sets. Um, I think last week against Greenwood, they were down 21 to 14 at halftime and they came out, uh, made a play and regained the momentum when Greenwood was about to go up two touchdowns and ended up driving the length of the field. You know, last year, that's kind of what they did to us. Once we got within a touchdown or two there at the end of the first half, they just lined up and bullied us. And that's going to be key for the defense Friday night. They're going to have to step up and make a lot of plays in the run game. Uh, Canyon won't beat us throwing the ball. If they beat us, it'll be running. But uh, uh, I know we'll be ready, and it's going to be a heck of a ball game. And really pivotal, like, pivotal, like you said, have a chance to win that last non-district game to go into District 4-2 and two is a heck of a lot better than 3-3. Three and three. Going on a high note with a little uh, uh, momentum, uh, big game. I, I, I think it's a good matchup for us. I really do. Well, we're going to, the little thing I added this week is keys to victory. And uh, it's a little something that I added this week. And I wrote down four things that I think is the key to victory. And one is we have to sustain drives. And uh, if we're not hitting the big chunks, we got to make sure we can sustain drives and not turn over the ball, not get behind the chains, false starts, things of that nature. Very imperative. The second key of, to victory is going to be we got to win the turnover battle and we got to cut down on penalties. And our third is going to be, I think, that we're going to have to score uh, 30 points. I think 30 points, and uh, I, I think is very imperative. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, you know, I think in our two losses against Monahans and Seminole, you know, penalties and turnover just absolutely killed us. In any offense, but like we've said 100 times, in a run-based offense, penalties get you behind the chains. And, you know, uh, second 20, third and 15, not a high conversion rate, especially out of run-based offense. And the fumbles in our two losses really hurt us. We've cut down on that, like you touched on earlier, against Lubbock High penalties, and uh, we're, we're cut in half pretty much, and we only had one one fumble. So we're, we need to maintain that. I really think, uh, like you said, you know, um, uh, I think we're going to break some runs off. I really do. Uh, I think, like I said, the defense will be similar to Randall's. The difference will be, I think, like you touched on, uh, ball control, which includes no penalties and no turnovers. And our last key to victory is the thing about Canyon, the two things that they always do well. They play very good defense. They take care of the ball, and yep. they let you make mistakes, and then they capitalize yep. on it. And our run defense is going to have to be stout because they are going to come out. Like last week, they come out in the spread, and they're trying to get real fancy and look all cool. And then they just said, ah, oh, forget it. The and they lined it. up in a power eye. Uh, haven't seen that. That's an old Shoved school offense. Throat, and they yeah. just ran it down their throat again and again. So um, I have a feeling that that's what we're going to see. That's what they did to us last year. They played a little bully ball last year. And we had time we to had, return the favor at home. It's time to turn the favor. So those are my uh, keys to victory this week. And um, so – when, before we get into um, our interviews, we got some really special interviews here. We got our 4A Division I Region I Gore Poll. And um, there's 20 teams in the 4A Division I Region I. We have a top 10. Every week it goes up and down depending on how teams do. This week we got a new number one sitting at the top, and that's the Brownwood Lions at 5-0. and 5-0, and yeah. That, I think they've got Stephenville at home this week, this, this, week, this weekend. That'll be a big game. Is that the Battle of 377? Uh, Is that what it's called? I believe that's right. Yeah, Battle of 377. I had my my college roommates at Angelo State were from Brownwood, and we went to a Stephenville Brownwood game one year in about '92. And yeah, it's a big deal. Um, but I think this is a uh, yeah. The, 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 I'm interested. I'm anxious to see how that one turns out. I think Stephenville's three and two, but they played some really stiff competition. So I really think that it'll be a good test for the Lions. Anxious to see where they're going to be. All right, number two sitting on the list is Decatur. Even though they're one and four. 
Decatur's played some really, really tough competition. I think the four teams they've lost to, they've lost to Anna, Wichita Falls Riders, Stephenville, and uh, Alvarado. Uh, you know, um, we talked about that earlier, Chase. You know, um, Decatur always schedules really tough teams. I know we've played them in the playoffs in the past when uh, we were eight and two, seven and three. They were four and six, five and five, and they beat us. You know, they've won this region going to the playoffs at four and six, five and five. So they're still up there. They're fixing to start district, and th they're probably still the team to beat in that district. The number three team, we got Estacado sitting at four and one. Uh, then I got Hereford sitting at the number four spot at five and zero. Oh. Heard surprise. And then uh, I do know they have a stiff test this weekend with uh, Canyon West Plains. Yeah, that'll be a good one. You know, like speaking of Estacada, West Plains kind of ran away from them in the fourth quarter uh, last week, uh, which we kind of expected that, I think. But, um, yeah, Hereford, I mean, I think they're probably the surprise of West Texas being 5-0, and oh, but they'll get a, a, a good test this week against West Plains. The number five team is going to be Springtown sitting at 3-2. and two. Uh, The number six spot is going to be Canyon High School. Sitting in the number seven slot is going to be the Andrews Mustangs. Uh, sitting in number eight is going to be the El Paso Riverside Rangers. Are they five and zero? Oh? And they are four and one. And uh, uh, but oh, they have a, they do have the a, they Paso have a big teams. test this weekend. So yeah. uh, I think they got either Bushland or Canadian, one of them. So get run out of the yeah. Building. They're they're, yeah. Going, they're in big trouble. Uh, number nine spots going to be Randall sitting at three and two, and Wichita Falls is one and four. The, I got them in the ten spot. Yeah. So that's going to be our 4A Division One Region One Gore Poll. Our next section we're going to go into is our pickums. Uh, me and Chris on the season are tied seven and seven. This week we have five games plus two bonus games. So we're going to go ahead and go right into it. Game one, we got Seminole at Big Spring. Yeah, we've seen both of those teams play. Big Spring's kind of falling apart. Snyder uh, embarrassed them last weekend, 56 to 13. I don't know if <clears throat> what's going on over there, but they've been a little more competitive the last two years. Looks like the bottoms fell out again over there. Uh, I'm going to say Seminole 63 to 21. I got Seminole by 14. Uh, game two, I got Stephenville at Brownwood. Yeah, we just talked about that. Um, Ryan Gafford is the starting quarterback for the Stephenville Yellow Jackets. Um, uh, they're three and two, but they played some really, really good, good teams. Uh, Brownwood has two. You know they're five and zero. I'm kind of surprised they're five and zero at this point in the year. They've got them in Brownwood. I'm going to say Lions by one. Got the Lions by one. I got the Yellow Jackets by fourteen. All right, Lakeview at Greenwood. Um, Greenwood's zero and five. This will be their first win of the year. I'm going to say Greenwood thirty five. Uh, Lakeview twelve. I got Greenwood by twenty one. Uh, Lubbock Estacado at Sweetwater. You know, Sweetwater was 4-0. I mean, they kind of surprised – talk about surprise teams around West Texas. Um, they got hammered by Clyde last week, but I think their quarterback went out in the first quarter with a hand injury, which they're a, a wide open spread team, throw a lot. I think that really hurt them. If he can't go, uh, I'm going to say Estacado by 35. I got Estacado by 40. And then uh, one of our bonus games, I got Hereford at West Plains. Man, that'd be a good game to go watch. If that was being played in Hereford, they kind of have a little home field advantage there. I might go with the herd, but I mean, West Plains, uh, they're the real deal. I'm going to say West Plains by 21. I got West Plains also by 21. Uh, now we're going to throw in for a little bit of fun. We got NFL game this weekend. We got Patriots at Cowboys. Well, the Cowboys really stunk it up last week. <laughs> you know, they dominated first two games and everybody's on cloud nine and then we kind of got back to cowboy reality but um i think that was a i think that was a blip uh new england still doesn't have a quarterback and they're not real explosive offensively i'm gonna say cowboys 21 patriots 13 all right i got cowboys by six um and then another bonus game we're going to the college world we have usc at colorado yeah colorado's another team who kind of got brought down to earth um you know what Deion Sanders has done there is pretty phenomenal considering Colorado has been a laughing stock of college, have been relevant in 20 years. Um, they still don't have the offensive and defensive lines to compete with the top tier teams. USC big. Uh, I'm going to say USC 49, Colorado 20. I got USC by 14. So that's going to conclude the pick'em section. And uh, we'll be right back with uh, Andrews Mustangs live interview in studio. All right, we're back here live with one of the Andrews Mustangs in the studio, and we got Brady Kelly is in the studio. Thank you for coming on. Glad to have you. Thank you for having me on. 
Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody out there, um, go ahead and give them your number and what position you play. Uh, I play outside linebacker, and I'm number 45. Number 45. We're going to go ahead and start with um, who uh, your favorite player, football player of all time, and kind of tell me why and describe him to me. My favorite football player of all time is Ray Lewis because of how physical he is and how whenever he hits someone, he let them know that, they don't want to get hit by him every play because of how hard he hits. And he let them know that um, I'm going to leave you a headache every single time I go in. Every, um, every time they come across the middle, they knew they were going to be in trouble. Yes. So most the smart ones didn't go across there, did yes, they? Sir. Yes, sir. Very good player. He is uh, – the guy's an absolute stud. That's, that's what he is, probably the best middle linebacker that's ever played the game. Um, so we're going to dive into the Mustang question. So tell me how it was – uh, this year, transitioning from playing corner to now playing the outside linebacker position. The transition, Coach Harvey told me that he was going to be moving me to outside linebacker. It made me extremely happy because I missed being in contact. I played middle or I played outside linebacker from the time I was in the fifth grade all the way to the seventh grade, and then COVID happened, so I didn't get to play. So whenever he told me that I was moving to outside linebacker, it made me extremely happy so I could get into contact again and hit people. So, yeah, so you go from uh, – and especially most of the teams that you play are spread. So you might only get, you know, four to five balls come your way during the game, but now playing outside linebacker, you get action. Mm -hmm. And it's like every play. And even if they run away from you, you get to chase down. Yeah, I got you, I got you. you uh, that's the position that I played in high school was outside linebacker and – Lots of fun. Had a lot of fun doing it. Um, so I want you to give me someone on the team um, um, who, let's say, could be behind the scenes. Maybe it's someone that people don't know a lot about. Maybe it is. But someone that's made a big impact on you. Someone who made a big impact on me is got to be Juan Hernandez. Uh, even in two-a-days, he would always push people, let them finish, tell them to push, push, and – even during the game, if you mess up, you miss a tackle, or you come off your blocks, anything like that, he lets you know that it's okay. Go hit him in the mouth next play. So basically, he he's uh, um, he 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 keeps it positive. He's constantly pushing everybody to get better. Keep going, keep going. I, uh, Juan's a good kid. I, I was very lucky. I got to coach him in youth and football. I got to coach him in baseball, and uh, one of the one of the most headstrong, toughest kids that I ever coached. Very good. Um, I'm going to say uh, Juan and probably a guy that most of y'all probably don't even know. His name was Trinidad Leal that played running back for Andrews back in the day. And those two were probably the most headstrong, toughest kids that, that I ever got, that I had the privilege. So um, let's see, um, what is your personal goal and what is your team goal for the season? My personal goal this year is to – go somewhere where there would be a recruiter. It's always been my dream to go play sports in college. Uh, I would really like to show out to a recruiter, my coaches, so I could go play ball in college. It's always been my dream. And a uh, team goal this year is for us to win district. We've all worked hard over the summer and in two a days, and now we're working hard every morning or every afternoon or even during the period. We're all working hard to try to win district. Well, I'll tell you what, you're having a fantastic season. Um, the hardest thing about doing this show, you, you, you got so many kids you got to get in. And we, we've been saying like week after week, man, we got to get this dude in. We got to get number 45 in. And uh, it's just we, uh, we're trying to get the seniors in first. But enjoy watching you play. Um, I really enjoy it. That's a position I played in high school. I got to blitz tons off the edge. And uh, very fun. And um, so getting to watch you and Cooper – Come off the edge is, is a lot of fun. You guys are relentless. This is a big game Friday. Um, this is a very, very big game, even though it's a non-district game. Uh, if we can get this one and we can ride four and two, go up to Lakeview, get a chance to go five and two before the big matadors come to town. So have these boys ready. You're having a great season. We appreciate thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. All right, we're back here live in the studio uh, for interview number two. And last week versus Lubbock High, uh, Andrews uh, rushed for uh, roughly about 530 yards, 526, 
Some uh, source say one says 533. We're going to say 530. Uh, from what we did, what we dug up and what we could find, we think that's probably the second most rushing yards in Andrews Mustang history. Um, our players, offensive player of the game was the Andrews Mustang offensive line, and that's who we have here in studio. And we're going to go ahead and start, and they're going to introduce themselves. My name is Jeremiah Azam. I'm the quick tackle. My name is Carter Lee. I'm the quick guard, and my number is 50. My name is Tate Gore. I'm the center, and my number is 55. My name is Max Pierce. I'm a quick tackle, strong tackle, strong guard center, and I'm 52. My name is Evan Bustamante. Uh, I'm the strong tackle. I'm number 72. Uh, my name is Brayden Williams. I'm the tight end, and I'm number 18. And so we wanted to uh, – our players of the game were these guys. Um, these guys – did a tremendous job, and offensive linemen, uh, some of you that are not familiar with football, uh, they are actually uh, offensive and defensive line are the most important parts of the team, uh, and uh, that's what wins and loses ball games is offensive, defensive line, and that starts from high school all the way up to the pro level. If you get to pro, college, even high school, the team's offensive and defensive line, teams that win in the trenches win the ball games, and um, these guys don't get enough credit. Uh, I've been watching them uh, since the spring, since two days. Uh, there's nobody out there on the field that works harder than these guys. They probably run two to three hundred plays per day at practice, and um, you can't. Not a lot of other people can say that. So these guys get a lot of credit. We appreciate the hard work y'all put in. Uh, going to a new running system. Everybody's used to the spread, and they like the fancy smancy throwing the ball around. You know, it's, oh, that's cool. But the, the reality is in this offense, you guys do the dirty work. But dirty work can be fun, can it not? Sure. All right, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to ask this to all the kids, and y'all just kind of <clears throat> let me know or point to who. So which one of the offensive linemen, which one of you guys right here, if you're in practice or whatever, which one's the biggest jokester? Oh my it's goodness gracious! Tate. I would have never, Tate. I would have never thought it's that one. Tyson, uh, nah, it's, it's, not, it's uh, definitely you, bro. No, it's, it's not definitely you. you. All right, so we're gonna go into the second question. So, uh, which one of the old linemen that's sitting up here? Things are going tough. Things might be going bad. You might be having a bad game, a bad practice. You might have done a bad play. Who is the guy that tries to keep everybody in line? Me. Yeah, it's definitely Tate. Other than me, it'd be Brady. So I guess he's the old man of the group? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. the old yeah. man of the group. Come okay. on, guys. Okay. Come on, guys. Uh, so get he's get the together. jokester and the one that keeps everybody yeah. in line? He's like, come yeah. on, guys, get it All together. Right. All right. Um, so a show of hands. So if uh, is it funner run blocking or is it funner in the, like in the past pass blocking? If it's, if it's funner run blocking, I want you to raise your hand. Well, I get to go out for passes. So. Oh, this guy. <laughs> and uh, so, okay, so that, that's consensus. Yeah. And um, so, this question, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, you can start down there this time with Braden and come back this way. So, I want you to let everybody out there know if it's fourth down and one to go, fourth and one, the game's on the line. And let's say they're like Braden, you get to make the play call. What are you calling? Which play do you call? Don't spoil our plays. You know, I'm running it right down the gut. I trust Mark or Leroy or Jay Sean or Aiden. I trust all of our backs and our quarterbacks to get the first down. I trust our blocking. Like, oh. I really trust us being able to just punch you in the mouth and get the first down. Great answer. All right. I'm probably picking a down block play. When we down block, it's pretty devastating to the defense. So, it's probably Mr. Max. Got to pick that. Just run it right through the D line, make him cry. I'll probably do a quarterback sneak. You know, me and Ace, we'll just go right up the middle. I mean, nobody's over me usually. Yeah, I'm gonna stay with the majority of them. Go quarterback sneak because ain't no one can stop us. I just go with any play where we down block, just because down blocking's fun. And uh, so um, 
some of you out there, some of you probably know, some of you don't, uh, down blocking. Uh, back in the day when me and Chris played, we just called it blocking down. Everybody blocks down or some people now uh, call it a wedge block. So basically you line up in your position and you're blocking down. You're blocking down towards the center. If you're on the left of the center, you're blocking down towards the center. Anybody that tries to shoot a gap, they're not going to be able to shoot it and you cut them off. Um, so I'm so proud of these young men. Um, the, uh, Offensive line doesn't get a lot of love, uh, and that's for any team at any level. Usually, you know, your quarterback, your running backs, your receivers, your defensive backs, and, and things of that nature usually get all the love. But um, you guys have done a tremendous job. You've worked your tail off. You deserve a little bit of credit, and I appreciate it. And we want to win Friday. Uh, go play your tails off, and uh, – do what you got to do, get everybody hyped, keep your heads together, um, make sure we're, we're mentally prepared, uh, cut down on the penalties, and let's go get us a W, and let's go flying into district, and let's be 4-2. and two. Yes, sir. sir. Does that sound good? Yes, yes, sir. All right, all right. Appreciate you guys coming in the studio. Thank you for having us. All right, folks, this is going to conclude Episode 9 of the Andrews Mustang Slot Team Mafia Show. I want to thank my co-host, Chris Gore. Yes, sir. And uh, also want to thank the Andrews Mustangs that were here live in the studio. Uh, that's what this show is all about. It's all for them. Um, also wanted to say special uh, shout out to and uh, thank you to Daniel Montoya with Monument Realty. If it wasn't for him, none of this stuff would be possible. Good guy. Our backdrop here is brought to you by Nix and Nax. Um, Andrews this Friday here in Andrews going to be taking on Canyon High. It's a big ball game. And uh, this is the last non-district game before district starts. Andrews has the opportunity to go up four to two. And uh, hopefully everybody that can possibly get out to the stadium can get out there. We have our home side will be blacked out. Um, also, me and Chris, my co-host, will be live streaming the game. We're going to be there live, live streaming, calling the action, bringing it to you. If you can't make it to the game, you'll be able to pick it up on our Facebook page, Andrews Mustang Slot Team Mafia Show or on uh, our, it's our uh, Mike Hudson's YouTube, which is uh, Eminem Creations. I always post the link on our Facebook page before we go live stream. So if anybody can't make it, you have relatives out there living all over the place, hey, tell them to tune in and watch it. And me and Chris, we have a lot of fun and oh, yeah. we hoot and holler and, and, and uh, have a lot of fun. We appreciate the boys giving us something to get excited about. We really do. And, um, Always remember, folks, it's a great day to be a Mustang.